Now, today's subject is dinosaur families. We put dinosaurs into family groups based on their similarities. Same way we do today, right? We have dogs are a family, cats are a family, birds are a family. In broader sense, mammals are a family, reptiles are a family. Well, we do the same thing with dinosaurs. To be a dinosaur, there are certain rules, and I'm gonna cover the easiest ones to remember. First rule is what time you lived. See, scientists divide up time like we divide up dates on a calendar, right? We have to know what times they are. Remember yesterday when we looked at our layers of dirt and we talked about how each layer can represent a different time? Well, we give those times names and we break them down. Like for instance, we can talk, we say this is a year and then within the year, these are the months and within the months, these are the days. And within the days, these are the hours. And within the hours, these are the seconds. We do the same thing with time. There's three major times that we divide first. That is called the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Paleozoic is life before the age of dinosaurs. Life before dinosaurs lived at a time called the Paleozoic Era. P-A-L-E-O-Z-O-I-C, Paleozoic. The time of dinosaurs is called the Mesozoic. M-E-S-O-Z-O-I-C, Mesozoic. That's the age of dinosaurs. To be a dinosaur, you had to live then. The age after that is called the Cenozoic. C-E-N-O-Z-O-I-C, Cenozoic. That's the age of us. That's the age of woolly mammoths and giant rhinos and bears and mammals. That's the age of giant flightless birds. So three major times, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic. We're going to focus on the Mesozoic because we're talking about dinosaurs. So that's rule number one. Now, the Mesozoic era is divided into three groups, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. During the Triassic, dinosaurs were relatively small. There were some big ones, one called Pladiosaurus was pretty big, but that's when dinosaurs first appear is during the Triassic period. That time period lasted from 251, well, it started uh, 251 million years ago and ended 199.6 million years ago. That time is when dinosaurs are new and they're starting to spread out and they're taking over the world. Then comes the Jurassic period. That's the one in the middle. The Jurassic period is the time when most of the giant long necks are alive, or Stegosaurus, dinosaurs like Allosaurus, my favorite dinosaur. That one started 199.6 million years ago, and it lasted until 145.5 million years ago. That's a long time. So that is the center one called the Jurassic period. And finally, there is the Cretaceous period. That's the last age of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs died at the end of the Cretaceous period. That started 145.5 million years ago and it lasted to 65.5 million years ago. That's the age of dinosaurs. Now, Cretaceous is when Triceratops and T-Rex and Ankylosaurus were alive. So those are the time periods. And by the way, today I posted on the, um, on the Dinosaur George page, the free educator's guide. In that guide, all the details I taught you yesterday, all the ones I'm teaching you today and what I teach you tomorrow can be found in that guide. There's a page in there that looks like this. That page tells you the ages of the earth. So I went through these pretty fast. Go to that page, download that, that uh, educator's guide. It's free for everybody. You can make copies, do whatever you want with it. Just don't sell it. But um, that has all these time periods. So rule number one to be a dinosaur is you had to live during those times. Rule number two about a dinosaur, it all has to do with your legs. Your legs. See, dinosaurs' legs go straight up and down under their body. Reptiles' legs stick out to the side. A crocodile is not a dinosaur because its legs are out here. A turtle is not a dinosaur because its legs are out here. Look, this is a toy. This is an Allosaurus. Now, uh, Allosaurus is my favorite dinosaur. Where did this come from? <laughs> I was in England visiting my best friend, Alex, and this was Alex's toy. And I told Alex how much I loved Allosaurus. And he said, well, keep your grubby hands off of it because that one's mine. Well, out of some weird thing, 
It leaped off of his bed and into my luggage. I'm kidding you. Alex gave me this as a gift. And Alex, it sits on my desk. So here's what I'm talking about. His legs out to the side. Let's look at him from above. You do not see his legs sticking out here because his legs are underneath his body here. So to be a dinosaur, you had to have the right kind of legs. They couldn't stick out to the side. You had to live in the Mesozoic era and your legs were not here. They were in there. Rule number two, they did not drag their tails like a lizard. Yes, dinosaurs are related to reptiles, but they are not lizards. A lizard drags its belly and its tail. Dinosaurs don't do that. Dinosaurs didn't drag their tails on the ground. So if you see a picture of a dinosaur with his tail on the ground, that picture is incorrect or it's not a dinosaur. Next, dinosaurs did not live their lives in the air. Yes, some dinosaurs may have been able to glide. Yes, some may have been even able to fly. But they did not live their life in the air. Those are pterosaurs. Pterosaurs and pterodactyls, if you want to call them pterodactyls, they are not dinosaurs. They are cousins of dinosaurs, but they're not the same thing, and they don't fit in the family of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs did not live their life in the water. They did not live their life in the water. They didn't, they weren't aquatic. Yes, there were giant animals living during that time, but those animals are not dinosaurs. Things like mosasaurs and ichthyosaurs, those are not dinosaurs. Look, when I talk about how we put animals into categories, this is the leg of a prehistoric horse, but you know what it is right now? It's gonna be a family tree. Yes, it's a family tree. Let me tell you what I mean. Dinosaurs, and the flying reptiles like pterosaurs and the swimming reptiles like mosasaurs, they're all related to each other. They all belong to a family called the archosaurs. So imagine this is a tree and this is the family of archosaurs. Well, the flying reptiles branched off and became their own group. The swimming reptiles branched off and became their own group. Dinosaurs became their own group. So see, they all came from the same family. That's why they're related to reptiles, but they branched off and became different kinds of animals. So dinosaurs did not live their life in the air. Dinosaurs did not drag their tails. Dinosaurs did not live in the water. And dinosaurs lived during the Mesozoic era. And it has to do with their legs. Now the letters are probably upside down if you're watching this video because I flipped the screen around so I could see what's going on. So if that's upside down, no big deal. That just says upright stance and that says sprawling stance. This is what I'm talking about. This is what the back legs of a dinosaur look like. These are what the legs of a reptile look like. See how they're sticking out to the side and dinosaurs are straight up and down. So when you see an animal with its legs sticking out to the side of its body, it is not a dinosaur. And let's look at some non-dinosaurs, like Dimetrodon. In every package of dinosaur toys, they always add a Dimetrodon. It's not a dinosaur for two reasons. One, its legs stick out to the side, and two, it lived during the Paleozoic era. It didn't live at the right time. That's why it's not a dinosaur. That, that is a crocodile. Well, we know that's not a dinosaur. Why? Legs are out to the side, drags its body, drags its tail. So that is not a dinosaur. How come pterodactyls are not dinosaurs? They lived at the right time. Yes, they did. But their legs, even though it doesn't look like it when they're flying, when they're walking, their legs are out to the side. When they walk, their legs are out here. That's the way their legs go. When they fly, the legs hang down. So it may look like they could stand up on those, but they can't. A pterodactyl is not a dinosaur. And by the way, there's two different kinds of pterosaurs. There are those without teeth and those with teeth. They both belong to the same group. They're both pterosaurs, but uh, they are not considered dinosaurs because of that. Sea creatures are not dinosaurs. Even though these lived at the right times, they are not dinosaurs because their legs or flippers are out to the side. So that's why they are not dinosaurs. And here comes the most common ones that are also in toys. How come these animals aren't dinosaurs? Their legs go straight up and down. It's because they didn't live at the right time. These animals lived during the Cenozoic era. That's a woolly mammoth, that's a saber-toothed cat. These are not dinosaurs because they didn't live at the right time. So now that we know what is and is not a dinosaur, let's look at dinosaurs. We're gonna break down and look at their families. 
Now, remember on our makeshift family tree, and remember we said this was the archosaurs, and these became pterosaurs, and these became swimmers, and these became dinosaurs? Well, just like dinosaurs, they branched off into two different groups. They branched off into two different groups, and we named those groups. They're different because of their hips. One group is called the Saurischians. That is spelled S-A-U-R-I-S-C-H-I-A-N. Saurischians. In English, that means lizard hip. And the others or, are called Ornithischians. That means bird hip. That is spelled O-R-N-I-T-H-I-S-C-H-I-A-N-S. And by the way, that information is in the free educator's guide, which you can download on the Dinosaur George Jr. page. It's just a fancy word. And again, these letters might be backwards to you. Don't pay any attention to them. This is what we're talking about. The way their hips are made. These bones are pointing in different directions. So if you are part of the Sauriscian family, your hips look like this. If you're part of the Ornithischian family, your hips look like that. That's the way we divide them. So now we have two family groups, Ornithischians and Sauriscians. We're going to start with the Ornithischians. Which dinosaurs fit into that family? Broke them into the main ones. They're Stegosaurs and Kylosaurs. Pachycephalosaurs, Ceratopsians, and Hadrosaurs. Those are the ones we're going to focus. There's some other ones in there, but these are the main ones. So let's start with the Stegosaurs. Now, their Stegosaurs came in different models. They didn't all look the same. This one is Stegosaurus stenops, and this one is Kentrosaurus. These both belong to the same family. They both belong to the bigger group of Ornithischians because of the way their hips are made. But these animals, even though they look different as far as the plates on the back. They still belong to the same family. So these are members of the Ornithischians, and those are the Stegosaurs. Ankylosaurs came in two kinds, club tails, non-club tails. This group is called the Ankylosaurs. This group is called the Nodosaurs. These two dinosaurs are related. You can clearly see they're related, but the big difference is no club and club. They both belong to the ankylosaur family, but they are, they are different. It's a group within a group. The ankylosaurs always have a club. The nodosaurs do not have the club. Now, they have different spikes and different things. They look different, but the best way to tell them apart is, are you looking at a club tail or are you looking at a straight-tailed member of that family? These guys are herbivores, they're plant eaters, and all Ornithischians are plant eaters. Some of them may have been, may have been um, omnivores. I can't think of one though. Maybe not. Maybe all Ornithischians are herbivores. But these are the family groupings. Club tail, non-club tail. Pachycephalosaurs. I love these dinosaurs. They're really oddballs. Pachycephalosaurs are the ones that have the big, thick dome on their head, but not all of them have it. There's two different kinds of pachycephalosaurs. Domed head, flat head. Round head, flat head. Round head, no, forget that part. Um, <laughs> so these are the pachycephalosaurs. The round dome on top, we don't really know what it was used for. Some people think it was used as a weapon. Some people think it was used for defense. I just don't know the answer to that question. But if I do a show on plant eaters, I'll go into more detail about it. This one, this is Draco Rex, has the big flat plate on its head. Now, some scientists believe that as it gets older, it grows a dome. I don't believe that. I think they're totally different animals. They're related, but I think they're completely different. So this is Pachycephalosaurus. And this is, is Draco Rex, and they are both members of the Pachycephalosaur family. And now we look at Ceratopsians, and I love Ceratopsians. Now, Ceratopsians come in two groups, the Chasmosaurs and the Centrosaurs. Chasmosaurs have really big horns over their eyes and a little horn on their nose, and Centrosaurs have a really big horn on their nose, but tiny horns over their eyes. Now, some don't even have a horn on their nose, but they still have tiny horns over their eyes. See, these are very different dinosaurs when you look at them. 
Yes, they look similar, and yes, they're cousins, but they belong to two different groups. So you have the chasmosaurs, and this is Triceratops. He fits into the group of chasmosaurs because he has big horns over his eyes and a little horn on his nose. And then you have the centrosaurs, which have little horns over their eyes and sometimes a much bigger horn on their nose. It's one family divided into two groups, right? The groups are determined by the similarities. So these are herbivores. They belong to the Ornithischian family. And one of them, one of their groups is called the Chasmosaurs and one of their groups is called the Centrosaurs. But they are both members of that family. Now let's look at Hadrosaurs. We break these guys. These are the duck-billed dinosaurs. Why do we call them duck-bills? Because their mouth looks like the beak of a duck. They don't live in the water. They're not swimming. They live on land. And they can walk on two legs or four. They can walk on two legs or drop down and walk on four. How cool is that? So there's two different types in this family. Hadrosaur is the family name, but there's two types. They are what we call non-crested, meaning they don't have anything on top of their head. And there are some that have a crest. So they are the crested version. Non-crested, this one is Edmontosaurus. It is a plant eater. There's no crest on top of his head. This is Parasaurolophus or Parasaurolophus, depending on how you pronounce it. That weird crest on top of its head, a lot of debate as to what that is. Some people think they use it simply to draw attention to themselves so other members of the family could recognize them. Some people believed it helped with their sense of smell. Some people believe they made sound through it. No telling. You know what's kind of cool, though? If you want to uh, do a here's a neat experiment, why is that thing so long if it makes sound? Well, here's why. When you blow air through a tube, it changes the sound of the air. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn this into a tube. I am going to turn this into the back of the head of a Parasaurolophus, okay? Now, if I blow air... You don't hear anything. If I blow air through a tube, <clears throat> why does it make that noise? Because the air is being squeezed together and it vibrates and it makes noise. So if I don't have a crest on my head, maybe my noise is not the same. But if I do have a crest, <clears throat> and if the inside of that crest is smaller, it changes the tone. <clears throat> and if it's even smaller, and if it's super, super, super small, hold your ears. <clears throat> okay, so if you want to do that at home, get yourself a piece of paper, roll it up into a tube, put your lips together, <clears throat> and sound like a Parasaurolophus. And if you squeeze it to make it smaller, it'll change the different tone, okay? So there are crested and non-crested hadrosaurs, and those are examples of two of them. Now, those guys are really cool, right? I like the Ornithischians, but I love the Sauriscians, because that's the family that includes the carnivores. <laughs> you have to do that whenever you say carnivore. <laughs> A carnivore eats meat. An herbivore eats plants. An omnivore eats both. You are a kid. You are called a candyivore because all you eat is candy. So now we're going to talk about the lizard hip dinosaurs, the Sauriscians. First, in that group, that group is made up of two groups of dinosaurs. One is called the sauropods. Those are the long necks. The biggest of all dinosaurs were a member of the Sauriscian family, and they're sort of two different body styles. There's the tall version. And there's the long version. Those with the long whip-like tail, those with the shorter, stiffer tail. These two animals could live together side by side because one of them ate lower, the other one ate up in the upper part of the tree. That's how nature allows two giant animals to live together and share the resources. If they all were the same height, they would all be fighting for the same food. But the food below, nobody would eat it because they couldn't reach it. These guys could reach the food low and medium, and these guys ate from the tops of the trees. So it wouldn't be amazing if you travel back in time. You might see a big dinosaur like a Brachiosaurus and a Diplodocus living side by side. While I think about it, somebody sent a really good question, and they said, what is the deal with Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus? 
people my age grew up with it being called brontosaurus. He kind of looks like this, right? Well, younger people like you call it a patasaurus, and it's confusing for the parents. Here's what happened. Somebody found the bones of a dinosaur, and he named that dinosaur a patasaurus. Now, a patasaurus in English means deceptive lizard. You want to know why dinosaur names sound so weird? It's because they usually are not in English. They are usually in Latin or Greek. So a patasaurus in English means deceptive lizard, meaning maybe the guy couldn't really figure out what it was because there wasn't a lot of bones. There was very few bones. So nobody really paid attention to a patasaurus. Now later, they discovered the bones of almost the complete bones, like almost all the skeleton of this dinosaur, and they named it Brontosaurus, which in English means thunder lizard, because it was so heavy, they thought, I bet when this thing walked, it must have sounded like thunder. Well, thunder lizard, because he was more complete, all the people in the world learned about him, because that's an amazing find. Meanwhile, little Apatosaurus bones that are sitting in a museum that nobody pays attention to, because they're not that amazing, somebody figured out, wait a minute, those bones are exactly the same as the bones of this one that you guys named Brontosaurus. Well, Apatosaurus got the name first, which means that's the legitimate name. That's its name. So scientists went back and said, I think you're right. I think the one we named Brontosaurus should have never been given a name because it wasn't a new discovery because the one they found before that they named Apatosaurus is the exact same animal. So... Brontosaurus is not a name that we use anymore because a patasaurus was named first. Now, I will say this to add a little more confusing, confusion. Some scientists said, nah, you know what? They're different enough that they should have their own names. But I think they're still debating that. So for right now, I'm going to go with a patasaurus is the correct name, but I still call it Brontosaurus and nobody's going to stop me from calling it Brontosaurus, okay? So these biggest of all dinosaurs were members of the Sauriscian family, and they fit into the same family as the carnivores. Now, remember earlier I showed you, where's my paper? Remember earlier I showed you the hips and what makes a Sauriscian a Sauriscian and an Ornithischian and an Ornithischian, and I don't know if you would do that paper, but anywho, wherever I put that paper, that, oh, here we go. It doesn't matter what you eat, it matters what your hips are like. And big long necks have that same sort of hip. And by the way, these are the bones that you're looking at. Um, these, there's three bones that make up the hip. There's three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. This is the ilium, this is the ischium, this is the pubis bone. So Tyrannosaurus rex's hips are very similar to the hips of the long neck dinosaurs. That's why they put them in that family group. So let's talk about the theropods. Theropods is the name of the whole family group. If you are a meat-eating dinosaur, you are a theropod. Theropods don't drag their tails. Theropods don't um, live in the water. Theropods are animals that are meat-eating, and they are meat-eating dinosaurs. And I'm going to break them into three groups. First, we're going to start with raptors. Whoa. Raptors are the worst animals that ever lived. And by the way, Right now, it looks like meat-eating dinosaurs has the most votes on the online poll. If that wins, you're going to see fossils of raptors, like skull, claws, teeth. Whoever wins, whether it's plant eaters or meat eaters, you're going to see a lot of fossils. So, raptors actually belong to a family called dromaeosaurs. D-R-O-M-A. A-E-O-S-A-U-R-U-S. To be a dromaeosaur, you have to have the killing claw on your foot. If you don't have the killing claw, you are not a member of the dromaeosaurs. We call dromaeosaurs raptors. That's the common name. Well, my best friend in the world, the kid who I stole the allosaurus from, asked a good question. There's a dinosaur named Megaraptor, but Megaraptor isn't a dromaeosaur. That is correct. This is the claw of a Megaraptor. Now, when it was discovered, they thought this was the claw from the foot, and they went, man, this is a giant raptor, right? Mega means big in English. 
Mega is a Latin word. It means big in English or huge. So they named him Mega Raptor. Well, later they discovered, uh-oh, that's his thumb. That is not his foot claw. And since this isn't his foot claw, he does not belong to the group called the Raptors. But you can still have the word raptor in your name. It doesn't mean anything. There's a dinosaur named Concho Raptor. He doesn't have the killing claw. There's a dinosaur named Eo Raptor. Doesn't have the killing claw. Doesn't need it because they're not members of the Dromaeosaurus. So the reason, Alex, why Mega Raptor has the word raptor in his name, it's because they made a mistake. But even if they didn't, it wouldn't matter. He's not considered a member of the what we call the raptor family because this claw is his thumb claw. He's actually closer related to Spinosaurus. That's really who he's related to. So, I know that's confusing, so let me talk about it one more time. The group of dinosaurs that have the curved claw on their foot, that group is called the Dromaeosaurs. But people call it, call them raptors because of Jurassic Park. It's okay to call them raptors. But that's not the true family name they belong to. It's dromaeosaurs. Some dinosaurs have the word raptor in their name, but that doesn't mean that they are part of the dromaeosaur family. So don't pay attention to the name. Pay attention to the claw. Top secret. Don't tell anybody. Between you and me. I've just finished writing my first kid's book on meat-eating dinosaurs. Can't tell you when it's coming out. Can't give you any other details, but it's about to come out. We will announce it here on the Dinosaur George Jr. page, and you guys can buy a copy of it. It's a, it is a book that's dedicated to meat-eating dinosaurs. I think you're going to like it. All right, so that was the Dromaeosaurs or Raptors. Now, let's talk about the big meat eaters. We're going to talk about crested and non-crested. Crest, remember, crest goes on the head. If you have a crest, something on your head, that's a crest. We don't call the shield of a triceratops a crest because it's not on his head, it's behind it. It's a crest if it's on your head. There are crested meat eaters. This one is Dilophosaurus, this one is Cryolophosaurus. And by the way, the reason why I chose Dilophosaurus is because so many questions come in about, uh, about the movie Jurassic Park. They showed that he had a big frill around his neck and that he spit some goo. He didn't do either one of those things. Neither one of those things. That was simply made up for the movie. In real life, this is what this dinosaur looked like. And listen, man, he doesn't need that frill around his neck to be dangerous. This is a very big dinosaur. He's 20 feet long. He's longer than a truck. This is a big dude. So in the movie, they showed the frill, but that's not it. But they have a crest on their head. Two thin, looks like plates turned on their side. Very, very thin. Those are not weapons because they would have broken pretty easily. Those, I believe, were used to show the females that they were grown-up males and that they should be their boyfriend. It's sort of like, ooh la la, girls. Look at my dome. Isn't that, I mean, look at my crest. Isn't that amazing? So this is Cryolophosaurus, and he also has these weird crests on his head. Again, very, very thin. They were not used for combat. So some, we call it ornamentation. They were ornamented. They had these fancy things. There's animals today that have that. You ever seen a warthog? You know all those little bumps on his face to a girl warthog is like, he's so beautiful. They love those bumpy things on his face. You ever seen a moose with those gigantic antlers? Those gigantic antlers are, hey ladies, does everybody see me? Well, that's probably what these crests were for, to draw attention to themselves, and it would also send a message to the younger males, you boys better get out of my territory. My crest is bigger, my crest is brightly colored, that's a warning for you to hit the road. If you're a girl, please come over, I'd like to have you over for dinner. If you're a boy, I will have you for dinner too, but it will be different. I will eat you for dinner. So, this is an example of the crested theropods, and now let's talk about the giant theropods that do not have crests. Tyrannosaurus rex, Spinosaurus, two of the big boys, two of the monsters. In this particular image, you notice this has feathers or fur-like stuff covering it. More and more evidence is suggesting that all of the meat eaters, the theropods, had feathers of one kind or another. And it may be possible that all dinosaurs had feathers. That's a possibility. 
In yesterday's class, I told you guys that when an animal dies, it decomposes and the soft tissue like the hair and the skin decomposes. Sometimes, though, there's still evidence on the bone that tells us there used to be feathers connected to it. Some dinosaurs are so well preserved, they actually see the feathers in them. Some dinosaurs, they use a laser to shoot a laser at the fossil, and the laser tells the scientists what color the feathers were. How nuts is that? On one of my podcasts, uh, one of the professors talks about how they use lasers to tell the colors. You should go look at my podcast. You can find it at dinosaurgeorge.com. Give a listen to it. It's an amazing thing. So, these meat-eating dinosaurs had feathers. Maybe all of them had feathers. These meat-eating dinosaurs are so similar to birds. Here's a picture of some living dinosaurs. Yes, my friends, birds are classified as avian dinosaurs. They broke the rules that I said you had to follow to be a dinosaur. Rule number one, they're living today, not during the Mesozoic. There were birds in the Mesozoic, but they're living today. Rule number two, I said they don't spend all their time in the air. Birds do, unless you're an ostrich or a penguin, right? So modern birds are classified as avian dinosaurs. They are actually classified as dinosaurs. You can tell your family and friends that you saw a dinosaur, it flew through your backyard and you would be correct. A bald eagle is a dinosaur. A parakeet is now a dinosaur. So I went and broke all my rules after all that information when I told you I broke the rule. I didn't break the rules, science broke the rules. But the reason why they classified birds as dinosaurs is because their skeletons are so similar you cannot look at a bird skeleton and a meat-eating dinosaur skeleton. You cannot look at them and say they don't look anything alike. Because when you look at their skeletons, they do. How come meat-eating dinosaurs had feathers? Maybe because their cousins, the birds, are covered with them and dinosaurs started it. Remember our family tree? Let's go back to our family tree. All right, here's the tree of dinosaurs, all right? Ornithischians, Sauriscians, right? They broke off into two groups. Off of the Sariscians, a little side popped up and that became birds. So birds are related to dinosaurs so closely, we classify them as dinosaurs. All right, you guys, tomorrow's class is going to be on extinction. I encourage you to go back to the, uh, on, this, on this page, the Dinosaur George Jr. page. Download a copy of the Free Educator's Guide, Parents and Teachers. I think you can use it. Teachers, you can probably use it moving forward in your classes. Now, I wrote that thing about 15 years ago, so there may be some newer information. If, if, you, if you look at something that's inaccurate, that may be why. Remember, vote for the, the topic you want for next week's classes. The class tomorrow, we're going to start off by trying to do another live broadcast and hope the signal's better. If it's not better, then I'm going to do this again. And finally, just to make sure that it, it doesn't impact, I don't know if it does or not, but instead of sending comments when I go live, try not to send any information because that may be slowing it down. That may be why, because we're getting so much. But you know, yesterday it was going all nonstop. We were getting messages. So I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think it had to do with the particular signal of my particular system. And let's hope that that gets cured up. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. And everybody stay safe. And I will see you tomorrow.